Before I start the sermon, uh, I'd like to say something. I'd like to mention two things. First one, I'd like to say thank you for the special song. That is really, really beautiful. I enjoyed that. Not only I enjoyed that, I was really blessed. Every word, every lyrics of it. Sister, thank you very much. And uh, the second one, I'd like to thank Sister Marlene. That uh, story. Thank you that you have changed the story because uh, that story actually correlates to our message today. And you know, hum, hum, yumpy, Humpty Dumpty has fallen and no kings or princess could join them together. But our message today um, tells us there is someone that could restore us, that could push, put us together. You cannot find it here in the world, but it is through Jesus. We will be joined together and we will be restored. So our message is entitled Healing and Restoration. And before that as well, I'd like to say something about, we heard in the news about uh, the nations uh, are in, in mourning. And I myself personally would like to join um, with great sadness, with profound sadness uh, over the passing of the queen, whose steadfast and loyalty sustained our nation for over 70 long years. Yes, uh, her late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, was a great leader. The greatest, maybe the greatest leaders of all time. And she was called the rock on which modern Britain was built. And the political or leaders and spiritual leaders pay tribute for, his, uh, for her great service. She is an inspiration for all of us and to the whole world. But on the other side, on the other brighter side, we are blessed. This year, 2022, we have a new prime minister and we also have a new king. How blessed we are for that. But I would like to tell you another story. It was told long, long time ago, 1700s. That would be a long time ago, isn't it? It's a story about a president, the first president of the United States of America. Guess who? Anyone can guess the name? Hmm? No? Yes? George Washington. I think if I'm right. I got it from the internet. No, um, but his, uh, his life journey was cut off. It was on December 14, 1799. December 14, 1799. Doctors were summoned to Mount Vernon, Virginia. He was very ill. He was uh, fatally ill. That uh, day... He was uh, supervising his estate. He was on horse, um, horse uh, riding. But then when, late, when he came home, he came home late with hoarseness of voice, runny nose, and a cough. That's all, the three symptoms. Hoarseness of voice, runny nose, and a cough. So he didn't really bother about that. Went for dinner. His, he went with his damp clothes. Imagine he was on a rose, uh, horse riding on the snow, perhaps on a you know, frigid rain and hail. By 2 a.m., by 2 a.m., the following morning, he woke up with 
and holding his chest tightly. He could not breathe properly. And then after a few hours, he developed a, a, a high temperature. So the, the doctors came over. What the doctor said, uh, doc, uh, George Washington told them, please draw some bloods out of me. So they draw about four inches, four ounces, I mean, of blood. That's about nearly half a liter. And then it, it, is, a, it, it is a belief that, um, it is a belief that when they need to, to take overheated blood out of the body, overheated blood out of the body. But that, when that didn't work, again, the doctors draw some more blood. And this time, it's about 80 ounces of blood. That's a lot. It's about 40% of her total blood volume of the body. That's about nearly 2.5 liters already. That's their belief in the past. But then... This massive blood loss, along with the accompanying dehydration, of course, and loss of electrolytes, and viscous blood flow could not help the president's dire condition. And she was so, he was so weak, and he, he begged for the doctors to leave him alone. No more intervention. Please, I want to die in peace. So the doctors respect the wishes, and though it happens, he died that day. And well, that's uh, traditional medicine before in those years, because science maybe is just new, or just started, but it's on infancy. And so it's, it's, it's a lesson uh, that reminds us that our life in this world is just but temporary. It, to some, even unlucky ones, life is short. But life is uncertain, and we don't know when our life comes to an end. But this morning, I would like to, or allow me to present something different. And our study is centered in the book of Acts, in chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. So, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. I hope we can draw some lessons and encouragement to strengthen our special relationship with God. Let us pray. Our dear God, our Father in heaven, before we open up your word, we invite your Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. We know, the Lord, in our human effort, we are useless. So we pray that you come to each and every one of us, use us, open our eyes that we can see and, under and understand your will, your love, your sacrifices for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John, two apostles, they are apostles already at this time. They were disciples, now they were apostles. Of... Uh, we're going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. As I have searched for this, the ninth hour in the Jewish day, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. In Jewish day, they start the day at six in the morning. So if you start from six and then counting down, the ninth hour is three in the afternoon. And verse 2. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily 
at that gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple. Let me just stop there. Because there are many, many things to address in this verse. It says this man was lame from birth. If you really uh, think about this, or say it in another term, this man was crippled. He could not walk. Or maybe has not experienced, or well, of course, he has not experienced walking, jumping, running, playing football, or, or um, biking, dancing, whatever you can think of. In, old, in, in those times, olden times, if the person is handicapped, it was considered an outcast. Anyone just wrote them off as being useless to the society. The only way for them to survive was either their family feeds them or they had to sit by a busy street to beg for food. Many people looked down on them because it was believed back then by many that being crippled was caused by a great sin, either by the one's parents or the crippled person himself. So we can say that he, it was a very, very sad life for him to live. The man was lame from birth. He was being carried. Can you imagine? His situation. There must be a certain level of shame on his on his part to endure daily, especially to be car carried to the temple. Obviously, there was no wheelchair on those days, no electric uh, in our time electric scooter, shall we say, no. Um, uh, allowance, uh, disability allowance from the state, nothing like that. And so, um, he accept this situation anyhow. He accepts that he is lame and he humbles himself and he is not too proud to ask for help. I would say this man is somewhat an example to us as well. If we really think about us, each one of us has need, needs to be carried. Each one of us has its own needs. We need a job, right? We need to, to at least help with dealing with, for example, difficult people. We could not stand on our two feet as much if we could not ask, if we could not, if God will not help us. Certainly, we need God to care of us through life challenges that we encounter each day. But are we humble enough to ask God for help? I leave that to you, to that question to, to think about. But let's continue. This man goes to the best place. I admire the, 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 the craftiness and the smartest uh, thinking of this man because he, he went to the best place possible. He has chosen a strategic location. He went into the, to the temple gate. You know, people goes to pray. That means that people there are in the best state of mind to be, to be what? To be merciful, to be generous, because they are going there to pray. 
for the purpose unless you have other motives or you know, intentions. So Peter, James, uh, Peter and John about to go into the temple, this layman asked for alms. Peter directed his gaze at him with John and said, look at us. Peter directed his gaze at him. So it means he stopped and looked intently to this man's face. He didn't just pass um, casually. He stopped and asked, look at us. Look me in the eye. You may have a deformed feet, but you are created in the image of God. You are a man just like me. Peter somehow treated him with dignity. The verse 5, And the layman fixed his attention upon them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, verse 6, I have no silver or gold, but I give you what I have. Let me stop there again. The layman possibly doesn't understand what Peter is saying this. The layman on this day had no idea what was about to happen to him, right? Have no clue. It was just another miserable day in his life. Another day of suffering, begging, and hoping that someone would help him. Little did he know Miraculous help would come to him. Peter told him he didn't have any money, but he would gladly give him what he did have. So what Peter can give anyway? Peter will give him money, something that money couldn't buy. A miracle. Peter said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping and walking, praising God, and he entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Peter told him, in Jesus' name, stand up and walk. His feet and ankles became well. Can you imagine, church? Just imagine, picture out yourself. How with just one phrase spoken by Peter, Immediately, he receives the strength he needs to be able to walk again. In a moment, everything changed for this lame man. What a joy. Finally, unexpectedly, he was healed. Everything was regenerated. He was rescued. He, no long, he was no longer belonged to the outcast or dejected by his own people. He is now even restored back to his people and restored to his God. So, if we apply this to us, that's how it is when we encounter Jesus when he saves us. Us. In a moment, our entire lives change completely. Because spiritually, we are all crippled. We have sin. 
just like the story in Hum, Humpty Dumpty. The, he was fallen. That's how it is. And there's no healing and restoration in this world, no matter how hard we search, we can find it because it is only through Jesus Christ. Jesus is able to regenerate a person. He is able to make new life and to restore that which was lost. The power of Jesus can heal us and to, can turn our life around so we can live a life pleasing to him. That should be the focus of our existence daily. Now we could acknowledge, we could not deny that we are all crippled, even physically. In some way, example, the need for eyeglasses. What that means? Impaired vision, right? What about dental braces? That is sign of an imperfect teeth. Why you go to the dentist for braces? Make a line. We have um, people with heart ailment. That's why they have their bad circulations. They have fluids retention everywhere in, in their bodies. They have arthritis, knee replacement for mom, uh, joints mom, possibly caused by severe arthritis. We don't know. So uh, this can all be considered disabilities to some extent because the whole human race lives with the reality of imperfection. Everyone experiences less than ideal conditions because we are all broken. We are all lame, crippled from birth. Psalms 51, 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We are all crippled and good for nothing. Moses say, But I am slow of speech and of tongue. In short, he stuttered. Jacob wrestled until morning, and the angel dislocated Jacob's thigh, causing him to limp. Sickness and pain are all around us. God loves to make things right in our bodies, souls, and spirit, regardless of where we are in our spiritual journey. Because all of us, like the lame man, we all need healing of our body, of our soul, and only through Jesus can heal us if we allow him even today. Like the lame man, we may wish that we had more money, but we learn that having a relationship with the Messiah is worth so much more than anything and learn that his love will transform us. And just like the lame man, we too can be experience the love of Jesus, his power and authority. He is the same compassionate physician today as he was during his earthly ministry. In him, there is healing balm for every disease, diseases, restoring power for every infirmities. When we endure suffering that are not caused by us, God commends us for that. He puts more important importance on how we develop our godly character rather than our comfort. That is sometimes the main reason why we are facing trials. So that we could be perfected and complete. God is preparing us for his kingdom and through tests and lessons in life, we are accomplishing the main purpose of our existence. So be, be, um, be alarmed or be um, prepared. If your life is smooth sailing, 
be prepared because time will come that you will be tested. God restored this man to walk. The same way he can also restore each and every one of us through repentance of sins and believing his name. We need to be that layman asking God for help to carry us along. When we call upon his name, he will restore us. Jesus, the God, came to the earth, lived a perfect life, died a sinner's death, was raised to life by the power of the Holy Spirit, exalted at the right hand of God, and he will return to save us and give us the reward that he promised, the eternal life. God bless everyone.